What up Wolfpack, it's your boy Amari, back again with another reaction video and today we're getting into Karma's Army Part 5. I've reacted to the other four parts of Karma's Army and I've enjoyed them a lot. I am petty so I love watching haters get proved wrong. The last Karma's Army video was actually really long so I'm gonna try to not spaz so much this time but I just have so much to say in these videos like there's just always so many juicy things to comment on. For those who don't know, I have a new upload schedule. So I upload every single Saturday on YouTube and I upload every single Wednesday on Patreon. This Wednesday, I did Run BTS Part 1 and 2 or Episodes 1 and 2. That was super interesting. My first time reacting to Run BTS. Definitely gonna be doing a lot more of them, especially because I'm super behind on it. If you're interested in that, definitely go check out my Patreon. But in the meantime, we're gonna get into this video and I will see all of you guys on the other side. Peace. Hello armies. I'm back again with another Karma is an army video. First of all, this video is not intended to hate other groups in any ways. And excuse me for grammar mistakes, cause we be new I sucks in English ha 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 ha. Now let's start. <coughs> the first topic is BTS YouTube views. Earlier last year, people were calling BTS flopped, because on couldn't surpass the previous BTS views records on YouTube. BTS flop, the ads were just doing everything. On peak 21 on Spotify, flopped on YouTube. They stay focusing on other groups instead of their faves as usual. Then they come crying when they can't get their 90 million gold. They thought it was the downfall of BTS on YouTube because it keeps getting harder and harder to break new records. And then Dynamite happened. It broke so many records. Dynamite got more than 100 million view in 24 hours. It was really funny how we thought we didn't reach the goal. But then we got a confirmation from YouTube. Okay, I just, I just, I need to say this, okay? This is very important that I say this, but On is objectively a much better song than Dynamite. Like, I, I don't know any musically inclined person who would argue that Dynamite is a better song musically than On. The reason that Dynamite was way more successful than On is one, it's shorter, so as far as looping, it's much easier to loop and stream and run up the streams on shorter songs, but two, and more importantly, I think you know where I'm going with this, the song's in English, bruh, so it got a lot more support and push from specific parts of the industry because it was in English and because they won't for whatever reason, we know why, push on at the same degree that they pushed Dynamite when on isn't in English. So, or at least not entirely in English. So just because one had a lot more streams and a lot more views on YouTube does not make the other a flop or bad. Not every single song that is great breaks a record. That's, that's a very important distinction that I want people to keep in mind. There are a lot of great songs. There can only be one record holder. Duh. We did it. We broke the record. That was such a moment of history for BTS and ARMY. Just a few days ago, Dynamite reached 900 million views on YouTube. Meanwhile, Life Goes On got more than 71 million views in 24 hours and currently reached 287 million views, which is still pretty good for BTS. So, BTS, flopping, no, sorry, BTS are not flopping, not on YouTube, not anywhere. Also, on a map of the Soul 7 was not a flop, it did well, just like I already showed you in the previous Karma is an Army video, and this is the recent achievement of map of the Soul 7, it ranked number one on IFP Global Album All Format Chart. Hold on, excuse me while I nerd out and see who all is on here. And ranked number one on IFP Global Sales Album with B in number 2, and Map of the Soul The Journey in number 8. BTS themselves was the number 1 top global artist, based on IFP chart, and of course we can't leave Dynamite as number 10 global digital single on IFP chart. With all of that, B 
BTS become the first act to rank three albums in the top 10 on IFBA's year-end global album sales chart since Michael Jackson in 2009. So who's flopping now? <coughs> now let's talk about Billboard Hot 100 chart. It's one of BTS and ARMY's dreams to be charted as number one on BB100, and we really tried our best to achieve that. But unfortunately so many people underestimated our power. BTS stands really think they are going number one, Mayo. BTS will never have a top 10 hit, ever. Stop spamming BB videos. Call me when they hit number one. Not going to happen in the next 10 years though. ARM is really out there believing they can chart Billboard Hot 100, Mayo. Well, karma is an army indeed. The universe clearly didn't approve those haters, because Dynamite got the number one top spot on Billboard Hot 100, not only once, but multiple times. It was really delightful, because people were expecting Dynamite to free fall after the first week, but it didn't happen. <coughs> and not only Dynamite which got number one on Billboard Hot 100, but also Life Goes On and Savage Love, which was thanks to BTS and ARMYs by the way, please give the credit where it's due. <laughs> it was such a cultural reset, for life goes on to be charted as number one on Billboard Hot 100. It's the first non-English song to do so. It's a meaningful achievement for BTS and ARMY. It's the embodiment of music transcends language. Just like what Nam June said here. <laughs> I love how BTS were never shut up about this, as they should. I've been waiting for the day when BTS start bragging about their achievements. It's finally happening. I love their hashtag, and how they never stop including it even after all these months. When they got their first number one. And how they never stop including it even after all these months. When they got their first number one BB100. It was one of the happiest day in ARMY Twitter. BTS were screaming. ARMYs were screaming. Everybody was celebrating. It was just a really good day. And now they even made a skit about it, and include it in their recent B album. I respect that. Please talk about it more sirs. And ARMY's memes. It keeps evolving. And I really love it. Why? Do I look like a fan of singers who got number one on Billboard Hot 100 for two weeks in a row? Number two for two weeks in a row. Number one again. Number two again. Number one and two at the same time. BBM as top social artist for four years in a row. A Grammy nomination. And number one and number three. With their new single Life Goes On and Dynamite alongside each other. <coughs> now allow me to update BTS D Sangs and Music Show wins. Let's have a little flashback about what they used to say about BTS and D Sangs, shall we? How's BTS topping my faves, please? My faves just earned their 16th D Sang in four years. BTS will literally never achieve that. Be quiet. Well, now BTS has won total 54 D Sangs since 2016. It's the most for any Korean artists. BTS also has been sweeping D Sang's awards on MAMA and MMA for two years in a row. Also in GDA2 in 2020. Now, no one can even argue about who is going to win Artist of the Year in an award show anymore. Because really, there's no one who's on BTS level as of now. No one can argue about Album of the Year 2 because BTS literally outsold everyone on the charts. Even now, Song of the Year is not something that you can argue about anymore. Those were mainly based on the charts and fan votes, and BTS were dominating both of them. Of course they are going to keep winning, if there's no other group who can out them. <coughs> Petition to stop making these awards fan voted, because the moment they get involved, it stops being about the music, and becomes about the size of the fandoms. Well in that case... Which is ironic, because um, nobody was saying that back when they had the smaller fan base. People were just, you know, taking a dump on them like that in that other tweet with the my faves. The point is that it's funny that people always try to change the rules or move the goalpost as soon as it's not benefiting who they like. But it's all good as long as their group or artist or industry or whatever is dominating. It's just... Bruh, we, we see. Like, y'all not slick with the stuff that you're doing. It's not even hidden. We have KMA, which is an annual music award ceremony that awards musicians on the basis of artistic achievement, rather than popularity or commercial success. And BTS is the only idol group nominated in a D-Sang category at the 2021 KMA. 
and BTS won two awards, best pop song and song of the year. So this that last bit where they were the only um, group nominated reminds me of some conversations that I've been having on my Discord, which for those who are interested, if you subscribe to any tier of my Patreon, you get access to my Discord. And we're talking about the fact that idol music, which outside of Korea is known as K-pop, is not really popular in Korea, and it's actually trot that is more popular. And idol music is seen as um, immature and for teenagers, and how BTS doesn't fit that mold anymore. Like they've grown out of that mold in the public eye, and that's kind of validation of that, where they're the only idol group to be awarded in these other more serious, non fan voted industry standard awards and i think that's just so cool but wow that's <laughs> it's impressive i mean which is the one of the desang they're now the artist with the most desangs one of the kmas so what are you gonna say about this <laughs> this is another update of bts music show wins dynamite is now the joint number one song with the most music show wins alongside invisible love tying a remarkable 29 year record not only that, Dynamite's 31st win brings the group's total win count up to 130. This makes BTS the first Korean artist in history to achieve 130 wins. Amazing, isn't it? Until now. Does that count only Korean award shows or on Earth? Like, you you know, if you... Does that count their, um, I don't know, Billboard Awards and some awards that went in, in the UK and whatever, or is that just 130 awards from Korean award shows? Dynamite still continue to win on music shows. It didn't even want to give up the spotlight for Life Goes On, which is also a BTS song. It just keeps winning and winning. Dynamite has too many power. No one can bring it down. Dynamite will light it up again and again. <laughs> I'm screaming. Armies really think BTS will end up staying relevant in the US. They are literally on sci level and we all know how that turned out. American public isn't going to stay obsessed with a group who can't speak English. It's just how they are. I get it. It's just how they are. Well, uh, you don't sound like an American to me. So as an American, I will speak for us when I say I highly doubt that. And the reason I highly doubt that is because it's not just a song. You know, BTS was doing huge tours, huge charting numbers, etc. in the U.S. long before Life Goes On, long before really the whole B album, Dynamite, all of it. And so to assume that they are, from the collective American perspective, a one-hit wonder is wrong in that they were already doing numbers even before that so it's it's a snowball process does that make sense the people who who weren't fully aware of bts before this just made them a household name it's not a they are the song in a lot of cases with one hit wonders the song becomes bigger than the artist but with bts having so many high charting singles albums tours that are doing crazy numbers it's a lot bigger than just any one song, whatever song you want to make it be. I'm assuming this is about Dynamite. So, yeah. Don't speak on us. You understand that the U.S. market is xenophobic, but imagine saying it's just who they are, as if it's okay to be like that. For the record, again, not all of us, obviously, because there's a huge fan base in the U.S. Uh, now, there will be more, and when butter happens, I'm sure it's going to be even bigger because new army are added every single day. But it, it's not everybody. I just, just want to make that clear because there's a lot of, especially on the internet, there's a lot of blanket statements about a country that has almost 350 million people living in it, which is the third largest country on earth. So just keep that in mind. Also, BTS certainly succeed to break through the many barriers to get into the U.S. market and actually being relevant. They performed on the BBMAs for three consecutive years, performed on the RMAs, performed on SNL, performed on Tiny Desk Concert, and recently performed on MTV Unplugged. 
They also got invited as commencement speakers for Dear Class 2020 and performed there too. They also got invited again to the UN General Assembly as a special speaker to send message of hope to young people facing difficulties amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Of all of the things that they've done and that they've been invited to, the ones like this that involve the government or in this case like the international government is is always the most impressive to me because that's really transcending earlier we were talking about music transcending language this is bts transcending entertainment like they when they were awarded by the president or whatever of korea which i don't know the the special award that they got but you guys can tell me in the comment section down below but i know they got like the award for korean public relations and international affairs or something like that from the korean government and when they were invited to speak by the un that's that's huge. That's much bigger than, oh, you make good music or, oh, you have a lot of screaming fans. Above it all, that is what really impresses me the most. And you can you can argue about Grammys or Billboard Awards or charting placements or whatever. But when you're recognized by non-entertainment industry fields for the work that you've been doing, there's not much else to say. BTS also titled as Entertainer of the Year by Time Magazines on 2020. It might start it from the so-called paper award as they so fondly called it, but it's not the finish line, it's just the beginning. They are growing, and they are here to stay. Not just a one-hit wonder, but history maker and record breaker. Even after all these years, the one who won top social artist is only BTS, and it's been going on for four consecutive years. Also don't forget they won top duo group 2 in 2019. Not only in the US, of course in South Korea, their homeland, they achieved so many great things, got so many awards and recognitions. They were invited to the Blue House for the National Youth Day. They delivered address as honorary youth leaders, reflecting on their journey to global stardom. BTS donated a time capsule gift to President Moon to be stored at the National Museum of Korean Contemporary History. The time capsule will be opened 19 years later at the 20th anniversary of Korea's Youth Day. One thing to add to your schedules in the future, ha ha ha. <coughs> After listening to Nam Joon's speech on the UN last 2018, a senior diplomat said, South Korea has made two major achievements for the last 60 years. The first one was its democracy and economic development, and the second one was producing BTS. They really are the pride of South Korea. <gasps> like, come on, dog. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's that's not a music blogger. That's not a Stan Twitter account. That is a politician. Like, that's. I mean, okay, here in the West. We don't trust our politicians. I'm not saying that politicians are great people or that they are the most moral of people or really anything good about them. Actually, they all suck. I, I dislike all of them. But the point is, they're not musicians. They don't normally touch on musical acts or music in any way, the entertainment field in any way. And so for them to be saying these things and incorporating BTS in these ways says a lot not just about how impactful bts is but also how seriously they're taken on the global stage there's still so many other achievements that i couldn't mention here because it will be too many but really there is no point of denying their impact at this point and once again i think we all could conclude that bts really paved the way <gasps> now to the topic that you're probably waiting for the Grammys. The first time BTS submitted their work for Grammy Awards was in 2018. As per usual, people were mocking them and underestimating them. BTS stands think they're getting a Grammy nomination tomorrow. BTS stands really think they're gonna get a Grammy nomination for their faves. You'll lie have to laugh. Fun fact, BTS will never touch a Grammy, and in a few years they will be forgotten. Well, that is certainly the opposite of what it's kind of awkward that all of the people in those photos were... Let's just say they're not Korean. I know those are stan accounts, but they're for artists that aren't Korean. 
who also aren't competing in any way with BTS, I guess except for charting position. But um, not that hate ever makes sense. But at least when it's from such and such groups stands, it it makes sense in the perspective of BTS is in a way competing with those groups and dominating them, but competing with those groups. So I get why they're mad. Why is a Selena Gomez fan, I'm not going to call them her fandom name. I don't like it. I've been on record about that. I don't like her fandom name. I think it's dumb. It is what it is. Why is a Selena Gomez fan dragging BTS? It doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. Like, it, Selena Gomez does not ever think about BTS, except other than, oh, hey, look, it's BTS. Like, it's, just, it's not, they're not competing. They're not battling. They're not in competition. They don't make similar styles of music. They don't do the same thing. They don't go to the same places. They're not awarded in the same way. I don't understand why. What, what is the motive? What's happening right now? Anyways, despite of all that BS, BTS got one nomination that time. It was the best recording package for their album, Love Yourself Tear. And of course, people still find a way to make fun of that. They were actually downplaying lots of their achievements at the Grammy, downplaying their recording package nomination, because it's just an album cover, downplaying their presence at the Grammy as one of the award presenter, because they were only presenting an award, not performing and downplaying their collaborative performance with Lil Nas X, because it was not a solo stage, but a collaboration. Now on 2020, BTS got another nomination and this time it's for their music. BTS were nominated for Best Duo Group Performance. Dynamite did that, BTS did that. On top of that, they're also going to have solo performance at the Grammy. As always, they are the first Korean act to do so. <gasps> Anyways by nominating BTS doesn't mean the Grammy suddenly stopped being racist and xenophobic. That part. is still snub map of the Soul 7. It's the number one album on IFBA's global album sales chart for God's sake. And yes, I know the Grammy isn't about numbers, but it's something to think about. They snub number one and number two best-selling album which released by POC artists. One is Map of the Soul 7, which is a Korean album. The other one is After Hours which is the Weekend's album. And honestly, the artistry of Map of the Soul 7 is not something to be questioned about. Black Swan itself deserve a nomination on its own. They're really the finest form of art. <gasps> While I'm editing. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, if you're on my Discord, uh, <laughs> you know how I feel about both of those situations. And, uh, Here's the spark notes. Not pleasant. I don't like it. Literally, 2020 was the year of two people. Well, two artists. Let's put it that way. BTS and Abel, The Weeknd. And both of them got snubbed in the Grammys. And I, I'm still pissed off. Like, I, I, bruh, I cried. I'm not even gonna, I, not like tears of joy. Not, not, te not even tears of sadness. I was angry. Bro, like, I wanted to hit something. I could not believe all of the records, literally all of the records in 2020 were owned by The Boys and Abel. And both of these groups of color got snubbed. And I... Bruh, let me... Woo! Bruh, when I tell you how angry I was, it, it, I... Like, I couldn't even form sentences, bro. I was so... I was livid. There probably isn't a word that exists to explain how upset I was. Mm. Okay, we're, <laughs> we're gonna move on. In this, the Grammy announced that the pop duo group category will not be televised when in its history it is usually being televised. Why is this happening, I wonder? Anyways, I believe Dinah might deserve to win. It was such a phenomenon. It broke so many records, and loved by so many people. So regardless of the result tomorrow, we already dominated the world with Dynamite, and every other BTS masterpiece. And just like this article says, who really needs who? <coughs> Before I ended this video, let's do a prayer circles. May BTS win, because they deserve the very best. Also, I got S worded on Twitter I'm literally crying. Why is this happening to me? Why Twitter? I didn't even do anything. Anyway, I made a new account again so please follow me. 
If you have Twitter, and scream with me about BTS at the Grammys tomorrow or else I'll be lonely. If you have some coins, that you want to throw at me please do it, and send it through my Kofi. it will help me a lot. Bye. I also have a Kofi, but I really don't understand how that works, but if you want to throw some coins at me, I... I your boy needs it, okay? Your, your boy needs it bad. Army, stay safe and healthy. See you on another video. Okay, so I was successfully able to make this video shorter. I tried to not speak in some sections in there because I knew they were going to get on the Grammys and uh, I knew I was going to have something to say. Uh, as we know in current day, they, they didn't win and uh, <laughs> We're not gonna shade the people who did win because I want to have a music career one day, but um Yeah, let's just say we think they should have won they They should have won. Okay, um Grammys are, are a They're a thing that happens a lot of artists in the industry really really don't like them I want one one day so I I'm gonna try from here on out in my life to not destroy them like I did in, what was that, part two or part three? I don't know. Either in part two or part three, I spashed on the Grammys. But in hindsight, I do still want a Grammy. They still do mean something here, for God knows why. I am 100% sure that BTS is going to win a Grammy at the next Grammys. That's for sure. Uh, that they, they can't afford not to give them at least one at the next Grammys. Abel already said he's not submitting any more of his work for Grammy consideration, which sucks because he deserves as many Grammys as he can get. I just, I, I don't know what to say about them at this point. There's, there's a lot of reform that needs to happen. That's a very PC way of putting it. I just, oh boy, yeah. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I have a new upload schedule here. I upload every Saturday and Wednesday to YouTube and Patreon respectively. I'm going to be covering a lot of content. Please subscribe to the channel. I really, really do appreciate it and I really want to keep growing here so one day I can be mad at the Grammys for snubbing me for being black. It's going to be great. Hopefully you guys will still be there with me. I love all of you guys so much. For my patrons, I will see you guys on Wednesday. For all of my YouTube subscribers, I will see all of you guys next Saturday. And in the meantime, have a great day, guys.